Good morning! Today we're talking about how to trigger GitHub Action workflows from external resources. Intro! There are many reasons why you would want to integrate external tools with GitHub Actions. Let's say that you want to trigger a workflow through a slash command in Slack. Or let's say that you just want to trigger the workflow to Postman just because. The idea here is that GitHub Actions externalizes the triggering of the GitHub workflows utilizing the GitHub API. So let's get to it. I created this repo so that you all could have the code that we're going to walk through today. So if we go into the workflows, I only have a ping YAML, but we're going to create a pong and don uh, while we're in the video. So if we go into ping, all it has uh, is some environment variables. In this case, the owner is malware, and in this case, the repo is, is this name. This can be any repo within your organization or your personal repos. Just make sure that it's the repo that hosts the workflow that we're going to trigger. And also, the token needs to have permissions to actually post into that repo. If not, this won't work. The important part here is that on the... It's, it's that this GitHub action will trigger when we receive a repository dispatcher event. In this case, the types is the event names that you're adding. So in here, we have a wrong pin. So when I trigger the dispatcher event and I give it an event type run ping, this workflow will trigger as long as the owner and the repository are the ones that I'm providing. This workflow will then run the npm run ping, which is our application that will then trigger other workflows for us to just play around and see how all this works. So if we go back and we go into index, you'll see here that we have a template payload and then we have the environment variables that we need. So we need the repo owner, the repo name and the GitHub token then we need, whenever we receive the ping command, we will set the event time to run pong, the client payload command uh, to be pong so that when we run the npm run command, this is where it grabs it from. When we receive pong, then it'll, it will trigger the run done workflow and then it will run the done command. And then when we receive the done command, it will just log. After that, then we're just checking some environment variables are there. And this is the dispatcher API URL. It basically hits the API for repos. And then within that, it asks for the owner, which in this case is Merrowware. The repo in this case is the example event dispatcher workflows. And dispatches is the actual command for that, that we're sending that repo. Then we do an access command and we send the bearer token, which in this case is our GitHub token. And that's pretty much it. So let's try to run it. If we go into Postman, we actually have set up a Postman collection that will actually run this. So we'll set up the owner to be Merrowware and then the repo name. I'm doing this live so you guys can see it. It's actually very exciting. And then we're going to go into the repo and copy that, cool. The event type, as we said before, needs to be the one that we want to trigger within this workflow. So we're going to go to ping and then we're going to say, okay, so the type is run ping and we're going to grab that, right? Now the key that we're sending is going to be command. This can be any key or it can have however number of commands or I should say payload attributes that you want to send. So the command for us is going to be ping, since that's what we're sending. And our bearer token is already set up from our parent collection. Now, the point to have is that you need to set a header. In this case, it's accept, and the value needs to be application VND GitHub V3 plus JSON. If not, this won't work. Once we do that and we send it, we'll get a 204, which is normal. And then we'll go to our GitHub Actions and you'll see that it's running. And you can see that a repository dispatch triggered by um, Merrowware. In this case, it's because I own the token. So I go into run ping and this is going to error out because we haven't completed all of our uh, 
necessary environment variable setup so that we can send that to the npm um, application so if you see here it says that it error out because owner and repo are required which we haven't set so let's do that right now so we know that let's go into the code um, we know that there are some environment variables and let's call this repo owner and then this repo name to match what the code was and we're going to we don't need to pass those as environment variables because as soon as we put it uh, at the workflow level, they'll be passed uh, properly. And I think that should be it. Oh, we may have to set the header on the right here. Let's do that right now. The header name. This guy. Let's accept. Cool. All right, so we're going to push that. Oops. Right, so what we're doing here is that we set the header to make sure that it matches what we did in Postman and everything should work properly. Uh, oh, one of the other things is that we need to set the token and I'll go do that real quick and come back with you in a second. All right, so I set up the secrets and I just named the token. So we're just going to set up an environment variable name. Okay, it's cool. So it is named GitHub token. And then we're going to get that from the secrets and I named it token in the secrets. So we're going to push this up. Cool. And then we're going to try to trigger this again. And then we'll see that it shouldn't error out now, but what's going to happen is that it's not going to trigger anything because we haven't created the run pong workflow, but it should complete successfully. All right, so we go to run ping. Okay, great. So everything seems to be working. Now we just have to create the wrong pawn workflow. So we'll go into the code for that and we're just going to create a clone of this one and just call this one pong. Cool, so then we'll call this pong. Mirrorware, everything stays the same. The band this is more the important about the repository dispatch now changed to wrong pong and this is going to run the pong command. Right now, if we go back, the pawn command will actually trigger a run done workflow. So we're going to set that one up as well. And the command is done. So we'll copy that over. And let's call this done. Done, done, done. done. Triple check our work. Run done, cool. And I think Ooh. cool. So let's trigger that or let let's actually push that up. Uh, pong and done workflows. And what's going to happen is like now if we triggered the postman call, it should all work. But well, the idea is that ping will call pong and then pong will call done and then all our workflows are done. Now let's see if it, all of this works. So we'll send the command now. Cool. And we'll go to the workflows. Let's go to actions. We see all our, all our workflows there. And okay, cool. So it's setting up the job. Now I'm running, installing packages, blah, 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 blah. All right, cool. So it goes to actions. It called it. Ooh, boom. It triggered the run pump. By the way, I haven't like uh, tested all the setup as you saw me doing. So it's very excited that it worked on first try. <laughs> I was a little nervous there. Cool. So. 
um, you know, like normally when you're developing, you find like a little bug or whatever, and you're like, oh no, but then this one is like, oh yes, it works, so cool. So Pony's working, let's go to the log. Oh, okay, whatever, I named the job ping. We'll, we'll fix that, I guess, yeah. Okay, cool, so that ran, it succeeded, and oh, it's running done. Oh man, I'm so excited. Okay, cool, whatever, the name of the job is whatever. So then if we go to Pong, installing packages, this should say that it completed, and I'll we'll work through all of it. Boom, ha <laughs> ha. There it goes, I guess we're done. Isn't that freaking awesome? Cool, so the idea here is that now you have seen how I triggered a workflow from, from an external tool, then within that workflow, we trigger a different workflow. Let's say that for some reason, you want to trigger an end-to-end -end test in one workflow, and then once that's done, then you want to start uh, some other process in a different repo when those end-to-end -end tests pass. Let's say that you want to deploy. So technically we could do a release where let's say you have a slash command or a postman call that triggers your CI. Then the CI deploys and then you merge to master and that merge to master then you run end-to-end -end test which is a workflow. Once that's done, then that will trigger your CD deployment to actually run the deployment workflow and then you're in prod automatically or automagically. How slim. Anyways, whatever. So let's walk through the workflows. That was very exciting. Hopefully we got all of that in the recording because that was very exciting. Anyways, um, so if we go to ping, let's do a recap. Cool. So we saw that it, okay, cool. So it ran ping. Um, it ran the, the no ping, which actually uh, receives the command ping and it dispatches that event. And you can see that it ran pong, the event type. Um, whoops, the event type is run pong and then the client payload is pong. So if we go to actions, then you go to, uh, let's go to pong. And we go to pong, then we'll see that it receives pong and it dispatches the event where the event type is run done and then the client payload is command done. Cool, so that's why we want it. And then when we go to done workflow, then we'll see that it received the command done and I guess we're done. And yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did just making it. You guys saw my excitement is because I just think this is a lot of fun. And please make sure to play with it because the more you play with uh, GitHub Actions and all these tools, the better you get. And make sure to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.